Hey, what's up, Kim 20s Mr. Jukley here. I'm going to talk to you about uh, preparing and diluting solutions today. Mostly diluting, but uh, preparing as well. Uh, so, when we're talking about the concentration of a solution, uh, it can be changed by, and these aren't necessarily dilutions yet, and we'll talk about that in a second, but uh, we can change the concentration of a solution by, um, well, by letting some of the solute, or sorry, solvent evaporate. Letting solvent evaporate. So if we're letting the solvent evaporate, let's just think about that for a second. Uh, the solvent for us, because we're dealing with aqueous solutions, is typically going to be water. And if I have less of the solvent, that means less water, but the same amount of solute, it's going to become more concentrated. I could probably even sketch this out real quick here. So here's my solution. And there's my original volume of water. And then maybe I'll have say one, two, three, four, five, six little solvent, or sorry, solute particles uh, spread through there. So six little solute particles. Cool. Over time, let's see here, over time, it's eventually going to, so same size container-ish, uh, it's eventually going to have less water in it, and we're going to have those same six solute. So less water, but the same amount of solute means it's going to become more concentrated. Cool. Let me just get that piece out of the way up there. Put it down entirely, actually. So that's, uh, that's our first one. We could just let it evaporate. Now, is that necessarily the, uh, the greatest thing to do when we're working in a chem lab and want to want to change things, want to do some cool stuff. Um, not really, right? Because it's, it's going to take forever, days or possibly even weeks, depending on how much you want to let it evaporate. Um, another thing that we could potentially do is we could add more solute, right? So add solute. Now, in this case, if I were to sketch this out again, so I've got my container, I've got water, and I've got my similar kind of similar container, pretend that these are the exact same size with the exact same amount of water. So in the first one, I might have that same six solute particles that are floating around in there, whatever they are. And if I wanted to make this a higher concentration, well, I would just add more of those solute particles. And then we can see, obviously, the solution on the right-hand side is more concentrated. Cool. So these first two are all about, and we'll even write this out, increase concentration. So they increase our concentration, or they make it, in other words, more concentrated. Our, just to be very clear what we're talking about there, it's the first two. Uh, the third one is we can actually dilute it. Uh, and this is the only way that we can really dilute things is by adding more solvent. So we add more solvent and this one is going to decrease the concentration. Concentration. Or in other words, it's going to dilute it. Right? So this is where the dilution comes in, adding more solvent. Uh, and again, we can kind of think about this. I mean, there's a few more details on the next page here. Um, this is something that happens all the time in the chem lab as well. So uh, when we order chemicals or, or when a scientist orders chemicals, a chemist orders chemicals, uh, they typically order really, really, really concentrated chemicals. The reason they do that is it cuts down on shipping costs. You don't need to shift as big of a mass of stuff. You don't need as much containers of it and, and like plastic for it. Uh, you do this in your house the exact same way. So when you buy your uh, so your washing ma machine solution um, and you put your soap into the washing machine, uh, you're diluting it as soon as you add water to it. Or dish soap is another one, right? If you had dish soap, uh, but you had to get soapy water, you'd have ridiculous amounts of water in your house all the time. Instead, you buy concentrated dish soap, and you put a little squirt in the sink, and it dilutes it. Um, so essentially, again, the big thing is we're adding more water to the solution. 
big, big, big thing with this is the quantity of solute remains unchanged, or in other words, the amount, and if we're talking about molar concentrations, we're talking about the amount as in the number of moles, our chemistry version of amount, uh, before has to equal the amount after. So the number of moles before equal the number of moles after. And again, we can kind of sketch this out a little bit here. So I've got at first a very concentrated solution two three four five six so uh, not a lot of space between those black solute particles uh, and not a lot of liquid in there as well so that might be like the dish soap that we have at home or something like that if i were to add more water to it so try and make the same size thing if i were to try to add more water to it right now those six particles would be way more spread out so it'd be less concentrated, but there's still only six of those solute particles in there. Now we can think about that as moles as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So just kind of going through, I'm going to erase this a little tiny bit here and go back to a nicer felt pen. There we go. And then just kind of thinking about this one, we're actually going to build our formula. So I've got N is equal to C over V. If I wanted to rearrange, I would say, um, oh, and I screwed that up. Let me go back a quick second. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I've got C, there we go, is equal to N over V. Now that's a real formula, not that like that one I just showed you. C is equal to N over V. So if I wanted N, the amount, it's going to be equal to C times V. Now if I know that the amount isn't changing, I know that N1 is equal to N2, and we just saw that with a little diagram. So the amount before of the solute is equal to the amount after. That means that the concentration times the volume before, or 1, is going to be equal to the concentration times the volume after. Oops, and I put final instead of 2. Chemistry, we typically use 2. Physics, we use initial and final, but chemistry we often use 1 and 2. So this is actually our formula for this, right? And we just kind of showed that this is going to work. This is the big thing. And honestly, there's not a lot of formulas that I'd recommend memorizing in chem. I would much prefer if you use unit analysis, but this is uh, this is one that you should remember. So C1V1 is equal to C2V2. Now, a couple of things with that. Um, v is the volume of the entire solution, right? So if you're adding a volume, uh, that might be a little bit different. V is the volume of the entire solution. We'll see an example of that right away here. Uh, and then one is before, two is after. Cool. So that's really all there is to it. Um, okay, let's check it out. A couple examples. First one, determine the volume of 0 0.560 mole per liter solution that must be diluted to make 600 milliliters of a 1.2 mole per liter solution. So the question is, determine the volume okay, of 5.6 mole per liter. Well, that's a concentration. Right, so the volume of this 5.6 mole per liter, so I think that's what we're starting with. I'm going to call that V1, and I'm going to call it C1. So we're going to take that, whatever that volume is, we're trying to figure it out, of that original, more concentrated solution, and then we're going to dilute it to make 600 milliliters of a less concentrated solution. So 600 milliliters, I'm going to call that V2, and 1.2 moles per liter, I'm going to call that C2. And then as I go through and as I look at this, I could start to go through and I could start to say, okay, well, C1V1 is equal to C2V2, right? And we are looking for, our question is V1. So let's see, I've got V1 times C1. I'm just going to divide both sides of the equation by C1. So I divided both sides of the equation by C1. Um, I'm going to actually even erase that for the sake of space. You might want to rewrite it. I'm going to erase it for the sake of space. Now I've got V1 is equal to C2 times V2 divided by C1. Okay, nice. Let's plug in some numbers. Let's include units and see what we get. So uh, C2, let's see, concentration 2, that was over here, that's my 1.2 moles per liter times V2, let's see, that's over here, that's 600 milliliters. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 0.6 liters. Then I'm going to divide that by concentration 1, which was 5.6 moles 
for the leader. Now, something nice happens here. Something really, really good happens here. So remember how units were canceling? That's that's one of our big things that we were talking about before. Look at this. The whole entire, I'll use a different color to highlight it. The whole entire moles per liter cancels with moles per liter. And what's the only unit that's left? Absolutely, it's liters. And that's appropriate for volume one. Excellent. So put your... Uh, thing on pause here and see if you can figure out the answer. Alrighty, so if you got one point, or sorry, 0 0.12857, you're on the right track. We're going to take into account sig dig, so I think with significant digits, I've got 0 0.129 liters, and then we can always double check our answer. I'll highlight this in green here. Our answers for a lot of these mathy parts are in brackets after the question. Perfect. So 0 0.129 liters. And all it really is is C1V1 is equal to C2V2. Um, one of the places where people have a bit of a challenge is figuring out which ones are 1 and which ones are 2. Um, you can absolutely do that though. Let's take one second to see if this makes sense. So I'm taking a really concentrated solution. Highlight that in red. A really concentrated solution. And I'm taking a little bit of it to make more of my secondary solution, my less concentrated solution. So it makes sense that it would be less of the original solution. So 1.29 liters of a really concentrated solution is going to make 600 milliliters or 0.6 liters of a less concentrated solution. That makes sense. Absolutely. Okay, so let's check out example number two. Determine the concentration of solution. If 35 milliliters of a 1.6 mole per liter hydrochloric acid solution is diluted to 450 milliliters. Okay, okay, okay. So 35 milliliters, 1.6 mole per liter. So that is a volume and that's a concentration. And that is being diluted to 450 milliliters. So that's a concentration, or sorry, a volume. And we want to determine the concentration. Okay. So C, we got to figure out which ones are before and after. Okay, so we are diluting 35 milliliters of a 1.6 mole per liter solution. So that's what we're starting with. So I'm going to call those ones. And then it's going to be diluted to 450 milliliters. So I'm going to call that two. And we're trying to figure out the concentration of that 450 milliliter solution. So that's going to be C2. Perfect. Now that we've got that figured out, we can go back to C1. V1 is equal to C2, V2. I am looking for V2, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by C2. It's going to get a little bit messy, so in this case, I'm actually just going to rewrite it. So I'm going to say, oh, and I made a screw up. What am I actually looking for? Not V2, so let's go back to that. Uh, C2, V2. We're looking for C2, so instead, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by V2. There we go. That's making a little bit more sense. Okay, so C2 is going to be equal to C1 V1 divided by V2. So concentration 1, that was 1.6 moles per liter times my original volume. So let's see, that's 35 milliliters. Now you might think that I'm making a bit of a mistake here by putting 35 milliliters in, but you'll see, you'll see. Let's see, let's go through and do 450 milliliters. That's my second volume, 450 milliliters. And again, take a moment to plug the numbers, crunch those numbers in, put the video on pause if you have to. We end up with one point. Oh, I'm making tons of mistakes today. Holy. Zero point. That's a little bit better. One, two moles per liter. In your calculator, you get point one, two, four, 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 a whole bunch of fours. Uh, but remember, we want to include sig digs. And then again, we can check our answer here. Uh, now, one thing that I wanted to, to point out with this particular question is uh, we did not change milliliters to liters. Did not change milliliters to liters. Did it matter in this case? 
Because look at the units on the top. We've got, I'll highlight it in red here, milliliters, canceling with milliliters. And what's the only unit that I have left? Moles per liter, which is perfect for concentration. So if both of your volumes, as long as they're in the same unit, you're going to be okay. If both your volumes are in the same unit, you're going to be okay. Um, if they're in different units, you definitely need to change them. Definitely. And, you know, honestly, as a good rule of thumb, if you want to just change to liter, that's fairly straightforward. You could just change to liters as well. Okay. One last example from this part. One last example. So calculate the volume of distilled water. So we're looking at some kind of volume that must be added. Oh, that's different. That's important. So the volume that must be added to 350 milliliters. Okay, there's a volume of a 3.4 mole per liter solution. There's a concentration of stock sucrose in order to prepare a 2 mole per liter sucrose solution. Another concentration moles per liter. Okay, let's figure this out. We're trying to calculate the volume of water that must be added to this solution. 350 milliliters of a 3.4 mole per liter. So I'm adding to this solution that I've got up here. So that's going to be my volume of the original solution and my concentration of the original solution. That means this must be my final solution or my diluted solution. One thing that you might be noticing with this is that the diluted solution should always have a bigger volume and should always have a lower concentration. So C2 and V2 should be lower concentrations and higher volumes. So two lower concentration, higher volume. Anyways, let's go through and let's check this out. So I'm going to go C1, V1 is equal to C2, v2 and make sure you don't uh stop this video too early here because there's a there's a trick involved with this one okay and we are looking for let's see looks like we're looking for v2 right so the water that must be added so v2 okay so i'm going to divide both sides by c2 those are going to cancel basic rearranging i'm going to rewrite this i'm going to say v2 is going to be equal to c1 v1 over C2. Okay, cool. Excellent. Very, very cool. Um, so then, let's plug some numbers in. Uh, 3.4 moles per liter times that original volume. Let's see, 350 milliliters. Okay, and then I've got 2 moles per liter as my final. So 2 moles per liter is my final concentration. Let's uh, just take a moment and plug everything in. So 3.4 times 350 divided by 2, that's 595. Let's take a minute to think about what the units are for this. So moles per liter is canceled with moles per liter. What are the only units that are left? If you said milliliters, you are spot on milliliters. Now, if you change this to liters, that's fine. You just use 0 0.350 liters, and we can end up with 0 0.595 liters as our answer here. Well, not really our answer, actually. Anybody know why this isn't the answer? Like, look at the answer up here. Highlighted in red, I suppose, again. 245 milliliters. That's not, that's not 595. What's the difference here? Here's the big key with this one. How much water must be added? So it needs to be added. What we just found, and I'll even write this out a little bit here for the sake of notes, this is the final volume of the solution. Not how much water was added, but the volume of the solution itself. So if I wanted to figure out how much water we need to add, we need to take that initial volume or sorry, that final volume, 595 milliliters, and I need to subtract from it how much water was already there before, so minus 350 milliliters. So that's going to be, let's see, 245 milliliters. That's how much we need to add to get to a total of 595 milliliters. So I hope that makes sense for people. So yeah, not too bad. C1V1 equals C2V2. Make sure you know how to deal with this equation. Make sure you know, uh, you know what the initial is, what the final is, both in terms of concentration and volume. And then look out for 
questions like number three, how much water must be added? Right, is not our final volume. So what we've got for the next little bit here. So there is something else that I want to talk to people about just very, 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 very extremely quickly. Um, you've got a ton of practice with this though. So lots and lots and lots of practice. And then I believe it's on page, yes, page 33 that we want to talk about our next little piece here. So if you want to put the video on pause, we're at 20 minutes right now. Um, you can absolutely put the video on pause and just come back to it again at that 20 minute mark. 20 minutes, and I forgot to put this thing down, so you're probably watching the seconds tick away here. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, you can put it on pause and then come back at the 20 minute mark, or you could just keep listening for another, hopefully no more than about 10 minutes or so. And, uh, and we'll talk about preparation of standard solutions very quickly and talk about what you need to do for that one. Anyways, uh, choice is yours. Let's, let's just keep rolling through here. All right, so when we're preparing a standard solution, essentially what we're doing is we're creating a solution that's got a very, very, very precise um, and accurate, I guess accurate's a better word, very accurate concentration. Um, so you know the concentration. It's not like you're buying it from the store and it's like, yeah, it might be this concentration. You are making a very specific concentration. So it requires accurate measurements um, it requires precise volumes, um, and you're going to need it in Chem 30 is essentially what, uh, what we're saying here. Um, so some of the glassware, like volumetric flasks and electronic balances, you, you may have never heard of before. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, things that I want to show you for right now, though, are just, uh, we've got this one, and we, unfortunately, we can't really do a demo slash lab. Otherwise, we'd, we'd have you in there probably tomorrow even uh, to do this one. But uh, a student wishes to prepare 100 milliliters of a 0.4 mole per liter cobalt 2 nitrate solution. Um, and they want to make it very, very specific, exactly 1.40 mole per liter solution. So the steps and everything we'll talk about in a bit here. We're not going to write them out, but I will get you to read them in a little bit here. But the calculations right? The calculations. This is something that you can do. This is something that we've actually done before. So if I asked you to do the math to figure out how to prepare a 100 milliliter solution of a 0.14 mole per liter cobalt-2 nitrite solution, you'd just go through and you'd say, oh, okay, well, I know how to, uh, how to calculate the mass there, right? And then if we knew the mass, could we just go grab that mass and put it on electronic balance and grab it? Yeah. So key is the mass. So step one is to figure out the mass of cobalt-2 nitrate. So let's see, I've got 100 milliliters and 0.14 moles per liter. Okay, so from these two things, my volume and my concentration, I should be able to get my moles. And if I can get my moles, I can use the molar mass to figure out the amount of mass, so the grams that I need, in other words. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna switch that 100 milliliters and I'll put that as 0.1 liters. And then I'm going to multiply that by a conversion factor. Again, we can put a space holder or placeholder, sorry, in the bottom there if we wanted to. So let's see, liters. I want to cancel out liters, so I'm going to put liters in the bottom. I want to end up with moles, so I'm going to put moles on the top. So liters cancels with liters. Kind of looks like a T for time now, so I'll cross it out even more. Um, and let's see, it is 0.14 moles for every one liter. Nice. Now the only thing that I've got left is moles. So I want to go through, and I need to use my uh, molar mass conversion factor to, uh, to figure that out. Now, I have no idea what the molar mass is. I'm going to have to put that in pause in a second here and, and crunch the numbers, and you'll do the same. But what I want to focus on first is I want to focus on these units and get rid of the units. So I want to end up, when all is said and done, I want to figure out how many grams I need to get of this. So go measure that many grams. So I'm going to need my molar mass, and I'm going to need moles to cancel, and I'm going to need to end up with grams. So moles has to go in the bottom, so moles over here, cancels with moles over here, and grams on the top. Perfect. So i got to go find a data booklet. Let's see here. Uh, put this on pause. You can do the same. Let's calculate the molar mass of cobalt-2 nitrate. 
All right, so if you haven't already figured it out, you can follow along with the calculator that I've got up here. So cobalt-2 nitrate, if you're wondering where this, these numbers are coming from, cobalt-2 nitrate, well, that's cobalt, NO3, 2. And remember, we've got to balance the charges of those individual ions first. So cobalt with a charge of 2 plus, nitrate with a charge of 1 minus, needs two nitrates for every one cobalt. So within that, uh, if you look at the calculator, I've got 58 0.93, that's the molar mass of one cobalt, plus two times 14.01, that's the molar mass of one nitrogen, plus six times 16, that's the molar mass of six oxygens, and turns out to be 182.95, and that's grams per mole, 182.95 grams per mole. Okay, cool. Now I just need to make that fit into my conversion factor. So the 182.95 goes with my grams. The one goes with my mole. I can now go back to my calculator and I can say, oh, well, if I want to figure out how much mass I need to measure for this, I'm going to say 0.1 times 0.14 times my answer, which was the 182.95 grams, I plug that in. Turns out we're going to need 2.56 grams, 2.56 grams of my cobalt-2 nitrate. Now, once I know that I need that much, I can go and measure it, and I can dissolve it in the water, and I make my standard solution. Uh, there's some specifics that we want to do with that. But uh, yeah, well, let's skip ahead and let's have a look at the specifics. So we are going to go to, it's quite the little jump here. This is page, I believe, 38. So what I want you to do for this is go through and read preparing solutions and preparing standard solutions because this will walk you through exactly how to do that. And again, this is something that you need to have a look at for Chem 30. Um, so you absolutely need to be able to do this. You need to know um, how to use the electronic balance, which things should be dry, which things can be wet. Um, and this will take us, let's see, page 38, 39 are, I believe, preparing standard solutions. And then page 40 and 41 are diluting those standard solutions. So the calculations that we spent most of this lesson talking about. So again, uh, check this out, have a look, and... Uh, and figure out exactly how to do this uh, because again it is something it's a skill that you need to know and have an idea of how to do as you move into chem 30. Uh, trust me I think your chem 30 teacher will probably review it with you uh, before you go into the lab and do anything like this but at the same time it's good to have a heads up rather than just going in blind. Cool. Last thing that I'll talk about for today is just a little bit of our practice and things that we want to look at. Um, so we are currently on page 35. Uh, your review of mixed concentration problems, please do that last if you're doing it at all. That would definitely be extensions. Uh, you, you do not need to do that much practice for us, but things that you should be looking at for today. Okay, where are we here? There we go is your dilution problems and do enough dilution problems so that you feel very, very, very comfortable with it. And then also don't forget to read page, so I'm gonna even write this out, dilutions problems, page 31 to, let's go through, I think it's all the way to the bottom of that one, all the way to the bottom of that one, 33 is what we're looking at there. So page 31 to 33, and then just have a quick read of page 38 to 41. And I do actually mean a quick read. Um, have, have a look at the big ideas. Anyways, I'm starting to ramble a bit here. So uh, have a good rest of your day, Chem 20s. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.